This is Tyler O'Neill, a managing editor at The Daily Signal. I'm honored to be joined by Senator Tommy Tuberville. Coach, how is uh, the RNC treating you so far? Good. You know, it's a little different than Alabama, but uh, I'm glad to be here. My f first convention, never been. Uh, oh, wow. I think it uh, overwhelming a little bit. You know, I've been to Super Bowls and I've been to big bowl games, national championship games. I've actually been coaching some of them. And uh, I've never seen like the media, man. This is uh, this is wild. People are enthusiastic. I think what happened after last weekend, there's oh, yeah. a there's a little bit more calm uh, to the place. But I think people are more serious about the future. People have to understand that that we have nowhere to go. We either save our country or we have to live in the country that the Democrats are just basically pushing us over the cliff. So uh, a lot of work to do. Uh, this this will be fun this week, and then we got to get on the road, not just for the president and the vice president, but also for the Senate and for the House for the next three and a half months. So what's your big takeaway from what happened, the tragedy on Saturday? Well, What inspired it? And very, very emotional. It was for me. And I've got to know President Trump, Trump quite well, play golf with him a lot. And I've introduced him in a lot of these uh, rallies all over the country and spent a lot of time with him and to sit there and watch that and it, i thought at first you know he got stung by a bee or something he grabs his ear and then he goes to the ground and and uh you knew it was pretty pretty interesting what was going on devastating to our country and even that much more if it would have been worse and i yeah. talked to him this morning he called me about seven o'clock and uh i said well how are you i hadn't I hadn't talked to him i hadn't bothered him well i lost part of my ear <laughs> and I said, well, I said, that, that's good and bad. Uh, but uh, he said it was divine intervention. And he never looks around, you know, hard right. You know, and he never looks at his signs, at, you know, the graphs he puts up on the screens. He never does that. And he, for some reason, he did that. And he got his head just right to where it did nothing but, but catch part of his ear. Uh, we talked a lot about the people that got killed behind him, the, the firemen. Yeah. People don't realize how compassionate President Trump is. President Trump cares a lot about people. He's done it all over his life where he's, he's helped people with their loans and done things that people don't really know. But <clears throat> that being said, we dodged disaster. We wouldn't be here today if uh, it would have been worse. <clears throat> but just wonder why a 20-year-old kid would do something like that. You know, just yeah. never know. Why do you, why do you think he chose J.D. Vance right after? I mean, it's almost like you have a man. You know, I, I think that compassion, that compassionate heart you're talking about, is almost part of that Vance pick because Vance is this man who summarized you know, the lives of parts of America that have been so, you know, hollowed out. And well, J.D. reached the American dream, and J.D. was poor as a church mouse. Now, I mean. He, he, kind of like I was in growing up, and I've been very fortunate in my life to become a football coach and never dreamed of make the money I made as a you know college football coach. You know what they make now. But uh, first Marine ever to be a vice presidential candidate, yeah. James David Rock. Vance, I think that's his name, J.D., and uh, he and I become very good friends. The good thing about the pick, and the president this morning called me at, what, 7 o'clock, and we talked about it. And he's always asked my opinion. Now, I never sway him one way or another, but he always talks to people. He gets advice, you know. And, of course, he doesn't know J.D. as well as I do. I spend every day with him, you know, in the Senate. Same thing with Rubio. Same thing with Tim Scott. Listen, I think any of them would have been good. But the great thing about J.D. is he's a great communicator. People don't realize that. I mean, he came in very early in the Senate and would stand up in our caucus meetings and here's this rookie standing up and taking on Thune and McConnell and giving his perspective. Uh, I was very impressed. So being a great communicator with Donald Trump is going to be a huge addition to this ticket. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Senator. I know you have another engagement. Is there any last parting shot you'd like to give? Well, I'm looking forward to November 3rd and getting to the point where we can kind of relax and get all this behind us. But it's been kind of this, all this has happened so quick. In the last few days, uh, I think we'll, when everything slows down, everybody will look back, including President Trump, going, man, how close was it? You know, yeah. so, uh, God bless our that. country and 
I hope we can just get this thing back on the right, right track. And again, we have no other place to go. This is the greatest country ever, so we got to get this fixed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Tuberville. Again, this is Tyler O'Neill with The Daily Signal.